Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to our Faith Over Fear series. I hope you and your families have been staying healthy and safe. I pray that school is going well and you're learning a lot of new and exciting things. Just think, you have been in school for six weeks. Time sure does go by fast. Last time we met, we were introduced to the story of Abraham and Isaac by two very special guests. We learned how Abraham's faith in God saved him from having to sacrifice his son Isaac unto the Lord. God provided a ram in the bush for Abraham as a sacrifice instead. God is truly amazing. We are going to learn about another Bible character whose faith in God helped him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. His name is Moses. Have you heard of him? We have a very special guest who will lead us in prayer today. Let's bow our heads at this time, and after the prayer, we will listen to our theme song and see this video which tells about Moses and the Israelites. Hello, this is Alvin Edwards, pastor of Mount Zion First African Baptist Church. I'm gonna ask you to pray with me right now. Let's pray. Dear Lord, most gracious and heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for being our God, our Father, our Savior, our Deliverer, our Keeper, our Protector. But then Lord, there are moments in my life where I'm scared, worried, and even anxious. And I don't know what is going to happen to me. So I do know, Lord, that I need you more now than ever before. I need you to prop me up, to wrap your loving arms around me and hold me close to your bosom. Then, Lord, please remind me day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, and second by second that you are here, that you have my back. Teach me, Lord, not to worry. Lord, I'm laying all my fears and anxieties at your feet. And I ask that you help me to get through all of the doubts and fears when I feel as if I'm being crushed. Remind me that you are a powerful God. Remind me that I can trust you. I know that I can't do this on my own. I need you. And so Lord, I ask in the matchless and marvelous name of Jesus, the Christ, the son of the true and living God, I do pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Okay. 
Now stop. After meeting with the Israelites to let them know that God had heard their cries and was coming to their rescue, Moses and Aaron delivered God's message to Pharaoh. Let my people go. But Pharaoh refused because God had hardened his heart. Instead of showing mercy, Pharaoh was cruel and made the work and lives of the Hebrew slaves even more difficult than before. The showdown was at hand between God and Pharaoh. Who was the true king? Who was all-powerful? Whose command could not be ignored? God told Moses not to fear, but instead prepare to witness his mighty power as he forced Pharaoh to let his people go. The next morning, Moses again came to Pharaoh, and again Pharaoh refused to let the Hebrew people go. So, at the Lord's command, Moses told Aaron to stretch his staff over the Nile River, and the waters turned to blood, causing the fish to die and the waters to become undrinkable. But Pharaoh's heart hardened further, so God sent a second plague. This time, frogs covered every inch of the land. This became so unbearable that Pharaoh begged Moses and Aaron to make this plague stop. The morning of the following day, Moses returned to Pharaoh and commanded him to let God's people go. And again, Pharaoh refused. God had Aaron strike the dust with his staff, and gnats swarmed the land, covering both people and animals. When Moses came to Pharaoh again the next day, Pharaoh again refused Moses' request to let the people go. In response, God sent a fourth plague, flies. Like a black cloud, flies covered every part of Egypt, except where the Hebrew slaves lived, spoiling the land and entering every Egyptian's house, including Pharaoh's palace. Once again, Pharaoh pleaded with Moses and Aaron to end this plague. God sent Moses to Pharaoh again, but Pharaoh still refused to listen to God. The next day, God sent a severe plague upon the Egyptians that killed their donkeys, camels, herds, and flocks. This hardened Pharaoh's heart even more against God. Again, God sent Moses to Pharaoh. When Pharaoh refused God's command yet again, Moses threw soot into the air, and it became dust that covered the land of Egypt causing all the people in Egypt to break out into painful sores. Pharaoh's heart, hardened by God, made it so he continued to disobey God's command to let the Hebrew people go. God told Moses to go back to Pharaoh and warn him that the coming plagues would be much more destructive and harsh than the last. But Pharaoh still wouldn't listen. When Moses stretched his hand toward heaven, God sent a hailstorm unlike any that had ever been seen before in the land. It destroyed plants and homes and killed animals and people. Pharaoh confessed that he was wrong, but again his heart hardened and he rejected God's command. Then God sent a plague of locusts. These insects covered the land and devoured the last remaining plants and trees in Egypt leaving the once lush farmland surrounding the Nile a barren desert wasteland. Pharaoh was still unwilling to release God's people, so at God's command, Moses stretched his hand up to the sky, and a heavy darkness swallowed Egypt. For three days, no Egyptian saw another person or left their house. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron so he could try to make a deal to end the plague of darkness. Pharaoh said everyone could go to worship the Lord 
if all the Hebrew people left their flocks and herds behind. When Moses and Aaron refused this offer, Pharaoh commanded them never to come back or they would be killed. With the people still enslaved, God told Moses there would be one final plague, a plague so severe Pharaoh would have no choice but to free God's people. God told Moses that throughout the land of Egypt, every firstborn boy would die. God told Moses to tell the Hebrews to cover the doorposts of their homes with the blood of a lamb, and God would pass over their homes. At midnight, the firstborn sons in every Egyptian household died, including Pharaoh's own son. From the lowliest of servants to Pharaoh's palace, there was no home in Egypt untouched by death. This plague so devastated the land of Egypt that Pharaoh commanded God's people to leave. The Hebrews, who had been in slavery for generations, had been set free. The final plague had the Egyptians scared, and they urged the Israelites to leave quickly. The Hebrews gathered their belongings and livestock and left Egypt with great rejoicing. To make their departure even sweeter, as this massive sea of men, women, children, and flocks and herds of livestock made their way out of Egypt, the Egyptians loaded them down with incredible treasure. Their centuries of slavery had come to an end. God delivered his people just as he had promised. God led the Israelites out into the desert wilderness. While on their journey, God cared for his people. To help them find their way, he led them in the daytime as a pillar of cloud. During the night, he appeared as a pillar of fire. These columns not only gave the Israelites direction, but also comfort. The pillar of cloud protected them from the harsh rays of the sun, and the pillar of fire kept them warm through the cold desert nights. After the Hebrews left, Pharaoh changed his mind and said, What have we done? We let the Israelites go and have lost their services. Pharaoh commanded that his chariot be made ready, and he summoned more than 600 of his best chariots and officers. As he and his charioteers rode off, Pharaoh's entire army marched behind him. All of Egypt's military was in pursuit of the Israelites. As Pharaoh's armies got near, the Israelites caught sight of them and began to panic. They quickly turned on Moses and asked him, why did you bring us out of Egypt to die in the desert? But Moses stood firm and called upon his fellow Israelites to do the same. Fear not, and see the salvation the Lord will bring you today. You will never see these Egyptians again, for the Lord shall fight for you. Moses stretched his hand over the sea and the Lord sent a strong wind that drove back the waters until they were parted, leaving a dry path straight through the middle. All the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea, walking on dry land with towering walls of water on both sides. After the Israelites had made some way through, Pharaoh's entire army followed them on the path the Lord had made through the middle of the sea. When Pharaoh's army had made it midway through the sea, the Lord threw the Egyptians into confusion and panic. Their chariot wheels, clogged with mud, fell off or got stuck. The Egyptians began to cry out in terror, Let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord fights for them and against us. Once all the Israelites had made it across safely, the Lord had Moses stretch his hand out across the sea again and walls of water collapsed, crashing down in huge waves upon the Egyptians. 
Not a single Egyptian who went into the sea survived. After this mighty display of the Lord's power, the Israelites trusted him and Moses as his servant. God had freed them from slavery and from the attacking Egyptian army. Overjoyed, Moses and all the people of Israel began to sing praises to the Lord. The people sang, I will sing my heart out to God. What a victory! He has thrown horse and rider into the sea. God is my strength. God is my song. God is my salvation. I will praise him always. Through this mighty act of deliverance, God set the Israelites free. The Lord would be their God, and they would be his people. Wow, what an amazing story. Moses was given a huge responsibility by God. He had to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let God's people go. As we saw in the video, Pharaoh was not willing to do that because the Israelites were slaves of Pharaoh and did all of the work that he commanded them to do. Many plagues were brought upon Pharaoh and the Egyptians. A plague is a disease which can affect the human body and they can occur through animals, insects, and other things. Even though several plagues were sent upon the Egyptians, Pharaoh refused to let Moses lead the Israelites out of Egypt. But one day, Moses went to Pharaoh and told him that all firstborn male boys and animals would die. This would also include Pharaoh's own sons. Pharaoh still hardened his heart until he saw his own son lying dead in his arms. Of course, we know that Pharaoh was very sad to lose his son in this way. He sent for Moses and told him to take the Israelites and leave Egypt. So the Israelites got their few belongings together and with Moses as their leader, they headed to the promised land. It was not smooth sailing because Pharaoh had a change of heart and he sent his soldiers after the Israelites to attack them. The Israelites had reached the Red Sea and could see the Egyptian soldiers fast approaching. They were scared and did not know how they would escape. What do you think happened next? Moses stretched out his big stick toward the water, and God separated the waters so the Israelites could walk through on dry land. Isn't that amazing? Once they all got to the other side, the ground was covered once again with water and all of the Egyptian soldiers drowned. The Israelites were saved from the Egyptian soldiers. Oh, what a mighty God they had on their side and what a mighty God we have on our side. Moses was a brave and courageous leader. His faith in God helped him to confront Pharaoh several times to demand that he let the Israelites go. And even though Pharaoh refused to do so until the very end, Moses never gave up. He knew that God was with him and God's will would be done. The Israelites probably saw Moses as a superhero, but God is the true superhero. Just like he was for Moses and the Israelites, he is our superhero today. Many times in life, you will find yourself in situations that you don't know how to get out of. Problems with your teachers and other students, being disobedient at home, following your friends who lead you down the wrong path, and so many other things. But remember, you have someone who you can go to and ask for help, and that's God. He's always there. 
just waiting for you to let him know what you stand in the need of. He loves you and he will never leave you. We have another special guest today who is going to read a story that I believe you will really enjoy. So I want you to sit back and listen carefully. After the story, we will have our closing song. Sing along and enjoy. Until next time, boys and girls, bye. Hello, children of God. My name is Patrice and I'm one of the children's church teachers at Mount Zion First African Baptist Church at 105 Langford Avenue. And I'm excited to come to you today to share one of my new favorite stories. And it's called, When God Made You. It's written by Matthew Paul Turner, illustrated by David Catrow. You, you, when God made you, God made you all shiny and new, an incredible you, a you all your own, a you unlike anyone else ever known. An exclusive design, one God refined, you're perfectly crafted, one of a kind. Because when God made you, somehow God knew that the world needed someone exactly like you. You, you, God thinks about you. God was thinking of you long before your debut. From the very beginning, amid history and time, you, little one, never left God's mind. God imagined your eyes, your head shape and size, and knew what you'd look like when you felt surprise. God pictured your nose and all 10 of your toes, the sound of your voice, God had it composed. The lines in your hands, your hair, every strand, God knew every detail like it was all planned. Out of billions of faces from cultures, all races, people God made from all different places. God knew your name, your picture is framed. God's family without you would not be the same. Cause when God made you, this much is true. The world got to meet who God already knew. You, you, when God sees you, God delights in what is and sees only what's true. That you, yes, you and all your glory bring color and rhythm and rhyme to God's story. So be you, fully you, a show-stopping review. Live your life in full color, every tint, every hue. Discover, explore, have faith but love more, and learn and relearn all that God made you for. Use your talents and passions, those gifts that God fashioned. Think of ideas and then put them to action. Because God loves you creating your true self displaying when light on the inside through art is portraying when you make believe the stories conceive the heroics the magic those tricks up your sleeve.
When you dance alone, spinning like a cyclone, being whoever, whatever, in a world all your own. God smiles and here's why. In the spark of your eye, a familiar reflection shines bright from inside. Cause when God made you and the world oohed and awed, in heaven they called you an image of God. You, you, when God dreams about you, God dreams about all that in you will be true. That you, God you, will be hopeful and kind, a giver who lives with all heart, soul, and mind. A dreamer who dreams in big and small themes, one who keeps dreaming in journeys upstream. A mover, a shaker, a lover of nature. A builder of bridges, you, the peacemaker. A you who views others as sisters and brothers and lives by three words, love one another. A confident you, strong and brave too. You being you is God's dream coming true. Because when God made you, all of heaven was beaming. Over you, God was smiling and already dreaming. The end. I hope you enjoyed one of my favorite stories. If you're interested in reading this story with a family member or friend, visit your local public library and request your copy today. I hope once COVID-19 is over, you're able to join us in church school at Mount Zion First African Baptist Church. Be blessed.